What is the critical zone? The critical zone can be defined as a thin layer of planet Earth where biotic and abiotic subjects interact together, creating interactions that can both be positive and negative for the environment. Often labeled critical due to the importance of this layer to the planet Earth. There are different critical zones around the planet and each one of them is at a constant change due to natural and human disasters. Landscapes don't always stay the same for decades. In fact, the average landscape changes every season, having not only biodiversity, but also having geological changes. A very helpful tool that has given the ability to trace down this change that has been recorded are maps. The human ability to move around and cover great distances led to the development of the idea that all this terrain should be recorded for the purpose of reaching specific spot coming from any direction. Although early maps weren't very precise, the lack of accuracy was compensated by the artistic drawings and decorations, giving the source a sense of reliability. Maps include two major features, man-made and natural landmarks such as roads, bridges, bodies of water, and mountains. The more accurate the map, the easier it is to understand the map and find your code in it. It was a nonverbal form of communication that started in 6200 BC in present-day Turkey with a sketch of a town map painted in a wall, depicting the town and the natural features such as the volcano next to the village. Cartographers is a modern name for people that specialize in map making, and it was these people that helped us understand the geography of this world before aerial observations. The Greeks were one of the first civilizations that created maps of both land and seas that they would explore. In order to be able to be a cartographer, the person had to have knowledge in mathematics and art. Mathematics involved taking measurements, creating scales, as well as coordinate systems. Art was also essential due to the creator needed to draw the features of the terrain, as well as interpret the math portion using designs that reflected the numbers. The skill was mostly art because without having the art depiction, an understanding of the map wouldn't be possible. Observing drawings was easier to understand and follow through rather than the measurements represented in numbers. Cartographers in the early days drew maps that would just follow their footsteps, making these maps inaccurate due to the not having a set scale of measurements. Asian cartographers became very controversial, having many philosophers and knowledgeable people sharing their own ideas of how to lay out of the world was, but it was until the formation of the Roman Empire where the map making processes revolutionized and made Europe the central point driven of map making following Catholic influences. Tools such as the telescope, magnetic compass, and the sexton give cardiographers an edge in map making of more accurate maps since the 17th century, ideas began to be shared and the cylindrical projection of a map raised, and became a standard way to create such maps. Maps became pictorial representations of the topographic of a region, and with the rise of the expeditions around the world, cartographers shared ideas and maps with other topographers given the mapping representation of the world. The mixed information of scientists scientific hypotheses, observations, and literature writings from the explorers gave the map makers an idea of what to sketch. The more a region was explored, the more detailed a map could be created in representation of the area examined. During ancient times, maps were mostly connected to mathematics by using what now is known as trigonometry. By knowing the time distance from point A to point B, in the angle traveled, it was possible to know the length distance those points had. With the invention of longitude and latitude, it was said to give the cartographer a common ground to start. Now with the exploration of the regions and landmarks observed, and even added maps tend to be more 
of a panoramic sketch of the area rather than a calculation sheet. In landscape map making, there are five basic rules to follow. Rule number one is always mark your center point where you start. Second, travel in a straight line and don't make any turns until you go back to the starting point, making sure to remember exactly that starting point. Recording the landscape, record data from north to south, west to east of your reference point. Make sure that you keep a relative radius. Fourth and most important, when connecting north to west, west to south, south to east, and east to north, always travel in a clockwise rotation using a big landmark as your north. At last, don't follow existing trails or bodies of water such as rivers and creeks. Stay in the radius walking spirally. Basic shapes would be used to recreate features in a map such as a series of triangles could depict a mountain range or circles with solid point, a city or town. Dotted lands can be represented as a trail or any body of water, such as a river. Map making has been changing constantly, not only on the past centuries, but also newly decades. And this is because technology has also been evolving, which has been critical for the map creations. Maps nowadays can be very precise due to the technology that is used in order to record these maps. Aerial pictures, as well as satellite imagery, have given the writer the ability to be writing very accurate maps. The art of the map has drastically changed because back then maps used to be drawn by hand, but now with modern softwares, maps can be very detailed due to the computer effects and satellite imaging that can be combined together in order to create maps. It's a tool made by men that will always help them guide themselves as they discover new lands as well as they revisit those previous lands that they had discovered or explored. Maps will always be important as well as the art that have been in the maps shown because without the art a map would be very hard to understand since numerical Numbers and coordinates will not give the reader the sensation or understanding of where he is. Pictures in the maps will help the reader be able to compare what the surrounding area of the landscapes are showing him. Natural features will appear in maps and can be certainly used as a point of reference in order to be found in a map to see if the surrounding area matches the map description, giving the reader an advantage of knowing if he's there or not.